Number 37. Construct your own problem. Consider two people pushing a toboggan with four children on it up a snow-covered slope. Construct a problem in which you calculate the acceleration of the toboggan and its load. And include a free body diagram of the appropriate system of interest. As a base of your analysis, show vector forces and their components and explain blah, 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 blah. All right. So I, I cho I'm taking a slightly different route. I'm asking, I'm giving you actually the... Um, the mass of the sl of the toboggan, and I'm asking you for what force is necessary to accelerate the toboggan up the hill at 1.5 meters per second squared. Assume no friction. You'll be doing problems like this though in the next chapter. Um, so I'm just trying to simplify it here. I don't want to get too complicated. So in any case, I'm really only looking at the toboggan here with the four, uh, what is it, children on it, and I'm mentioning that it weighs 100 kilograms, okay? So now what we need to do is we have to try to figure out um, how to create a free body diagram that, uh, that diagrams this toboggan effectively. Now what's different about this as opposed to other problems is that we have an angle here. All right. So let's think about that. All right. Let me do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my axes at a 30 degree angle. Okay. So what I'll do here, let me do this. Ready? Let's draw... A set of axes. Okay. Then what I'm going to do, a little magic, I'm going to take this and rotate it 30 degrees. And let's say that's about 30 degrees. Right? That might be about 30 degrees or so. Okay. So now all I did was I just rotated my axis. All right. Now here, this point represents the point of the toboggan. Let's say right here. Okay. Now, where is the weight of this toboggan pointing? It always points, remember, directly down. Like if you had a plumb line from this point, it always points directly down. Okay, it doesn't point, it doesn't point in this direction. It points down. Well, that's not down. It points down. Okay, so from this free body diagram, I will draw the weight of the toboggan. Now, that doesn't look straight down. Draw the toboggan weight straight down. So this vector represents the weight of the toboggan. So weight sub t, w sub t, okay? Now what we have is we need to then apply some force, right? We're looking for what force is necessary to accelerate the toboggan up the hill. So there must be some force pushing it up the hill, right? I don't know what it is, but that's what we're trying to find. So now in this diagram, I want to find a force and we're going to assume that we're pushing the cart or the cart is being pushed exactly at the same angle of the slope. It doesn't have to be, but we're trying to keep this simple here, guys. All right. So now uh, this value is FA. We'll call it F applied. Okay. So, all right. So things are looking good so far. And now, all right. So it looks like we have a free body diagram. It's a little funky because it's at an angle, but no big deal. All right. If I'm trying to find the acceleration right? You have to ask yourself acceleration in what direction? Well, this we're accelerating in the x direction, right? It's going up the hill. I decided to rotate my axes so that the movement of this toboggan is on the same plane as the acceleration, all right? So the acceleration is purely in the x direction given my, you know, rotated axes. So what does that mean? That means this. That means that I can use the sum of the forces in the x direction formula to help me solve the mass of the object times then the acceleration of that object in the x direction. So the problem here that I made gave us the acceleration, right? And we do know the mass was 100. Okay, so we know half of it, right? So the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to uh, 100 multiplied by 1.5. Okay, so that's fine. So let's just keep going along uh, those lines. So this is just 150, right? Now, here's the thing. Some of the forces in the x direction. So what vectors are in the x direction? Well, purely the force applied is in the x direction. It's exactly, it exactly lies on the x-axis. But does the weight of the toboggan lie in the x-axis? Directly? No. Does any of it, though, lie in the x-axis? There's the key. Yeah, yeah, actually a little bit of it does, right? If you look at this, if you look at this as just a regular old vector, doesn't that have both an X and Y component to it? Yeah, it does, right? Guess what this part is right here at the bottom. I'm going to draw it in right here at the bottom. 
Guess what that is? Let me draw it a little straight. Guess what that is? That's the X component of the weight. Okay, so this, and look where it's pointing. It's pointing back. Doesn't that kind of make sense, right? If you if you had this toboggan on the hill, isn't it going to want to slide back down? Why? Well, because of this fact. The angle here that's created is actually a 30-degree angle. It's exactly the same as this angle. Remember, I rotated the axis 30 degrees. That's why it's the same. So now if I'm looking to find this side, here's the thing. This is why I never always say, oh, if you want to find X, use cosine. I, I hate that. I always go through the trig, okay? Because here is where one of those cases, you're not going to use cosine to solve for X. But if I'm always looking at, at it from a, a trigonometric perspective, I, I can't go wrong, all right? So the X component here can be found by using sine because this is the hypotenuse. This is the angle, and I'm looking for the side opposite of that angle. So here I could create an equation that deals with sine of theta is equal to the opposite side of the hypotenuse. The sine then of 30, right, will be equal to the opposite side, which I'll call the toboggan's weight in the x direction, all over, and that's negative, by the way, because it's pointing to the left, divided by then the weight of the toboggan itself. So in other words, the weight of the toboggan in the x direction Remember that's negative, right? Because it's negative over there, but I'm just gonna transfer that sign right away, okay? Is equal to negative, the weight of the toboggan itself multiplied by the sine of 30, okay? So this is the value of the X component. Guess what now, guys? I can now use this in my formula because it's an X component, all right? So the force applied, that's positive in the X direction, minus then, the weight, of the, the weight of the toboggan multiplied by the sine of 30 will be equal to 150. And I forgot the zero here. I don't know what happened. I probably wrote it, but the pen didn't pick it up. In any case, so now how do we solve for this? It's easy, right? Just add this term on over, okay? But remember, we do know the weight of the toboggan. It's 100, right? So let me just develop this a little more. 100 times the sine of 30, okay, is equal to 150. And now simply just add this, calculate it, and then add it on over, okay? Add it on over. So what do we get? We get 150 plus 100 times the sine of 30. So we get 200. Look at that. So the force here, the I, I hold on one second. I call this Fx. I meant to call it F sub A. Okay, I just noticed that, sorry, this should be F sub A, right? Because that's the force applied. That's the one force in the X direction, all right? So the force applied here will be equal to simply 200 Newtons, all right? And that should kind of make sense. Not only do we have to overcome its mass with this acceleration, all right? But we also have to overcome some of the weight that's pointing back on us. So that's why it should be greater than 150. Easy peasy, guys. All right, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. If you could hit that subscribe button and the like button, actually, that would be awesome. Um, if you guys have any suggestions, we're always open. Leave a comment for us and uh, we'll get back to you. Listen, thank you so very, very much.